So if you've spent any time on any of the Ender 5 message boards or Ender 3 message boards and are learning about how these printers work and learning about the possible upgrades or problems that people have with it, then soon you'll hear about something called a TL smoother. Well, why do you need a TL smoother? Well, some people find that on their printers, whether it's an Ender 3, Ender 5, or specifically any printer using the DRV8825 stepper motor drivers, that you might run into something called salmon skinning. And what that is, it's a phenomenon that you'll notice that the printer actually leaves kind of a, 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 a fish skin effect on the, the print. It, it, it's usually on curves. It, it happens due to the fact that the, the stepper drivers they're not actually delivering a smooth signal to your stepper and it results in just a waviness on the surface. So I wanted to know, does this affect the Ender 5 that I've been running and that I've been doing all these upgrade videos on? And so what I did, I ran a few test prints. There are a lot of various test prints that you can find on uh, Thingiverse and other websites. And what I did, I ran this one and I ran this one and I ran a Benchy upscale to show the problem and uh, I have to say on the Ender 5 it's fairly sporadic but I can reproduce it. So while this one and this one didn't produce the problem, my Benchy did and you'll see here that it shows the scaling problem and since it's reproducible I think we can fix it. So, since I've shown it's a potential problem on the Ender 5 and I can reproduce it, I'm going to add some tail smoothers to my printer. I'm Chris, and this is Curzy Fabrications. So, as I mentioned, I've shown that in certain test prints I can reproduce this. It's not a consistent problem on the Ender 5 though. As I ran different prints that should have reproduced the problem, I wasn't able to see it. So I had to find one that would produce it consistently. So this Benchy printed in the left to right orientation will actually show the scaling problem uh, that others have reported. So what exactly is a TL smoother? Well, a TL smoother is simply a small board. It has a series of diodes on it that will even out the signal coming from your stepper driver in certain cases to your stepper motor. So any of the rapid moving uh, motors that we have both on the X and Y axis we'll need to add one of these two to sort of smooth out that signal. Uh, what's that going to take? Well first of all I have printed this mounting bracket. I will provide the link to this. It is straight off the thing of verse. I did not produce this myself. We're going to add this inside of the electronics enclosure and uh, we've got two of these like I mentioned. So we're gonna have to pull this apart. This is gonna require just a little bit of electronics work. It shouldn't be that dangerous, but again, we are opening it up. It does deal with the electrical components of your printer. Do this at your own risk, but let's get started. All right, as usual, let's start with the parts that we're gonna need for this upgrade. First, we have the 3D printed mount that I printed before. We have two TL smoothers with the cables that they came with. I've got uh, eight of these M3 eight millimeter screws. Uh, now this probably works better with six millimeter screws, but I didn't have any of those. So we're gonna go with what I've got. And then according to the instructions on Thingiverse, I'm also gonna need uh, two of these M5 nuts. So obviously some pliers to put everything together and I'm gonna need a screwdriver, which I don't have in this picture. Boom, there is a screwdriver that we will need to screw everything together. So let's get the printer apart and get this installed. So if you're like me, you keep all of the tools and everything that came with your printer right there and we're gonna get rid of that. And then obviously make sure your printer's off, unplug the power cord from your electronics enclosure. And now before you tip over your printer, go ahead and set all of these to where they're not gonna fall over. Now, let's lift it up so that we can get underneath to the electronics enclosure. So this is pretty easy to take apart. We just remove these four screws and that'll be all we need to do. All 
All right, screws out, close her off. Now, as you're pulling this off, there's a fan connected here. You'll need to just unplug that from the motherboard and set that aside. Now, let's look at what we've got in here. So I decided to change orientation here so that you could better see where this is gonna go. So these screws are gonna be the mounting points for this bracket. First thing I wanna do before I do anything else, let's make sure that this mounting bracket is actually going to fit where it's supposed to go, because, yep, as you can see, it fits right there. We'll pull that off, and let's actually mount the TL smoothers. It won't come off. Oh, there it goes, okay. Let's actually mount the TL smoothers to this bracket. So I'm pretty sure orientation doesn't matter on these. I looked at these diodes and noticed they go, you got two going in each direction uh, for, for each signal line here. All right, since my screws are a little bit long, I'm going to add some washers to mine. And if you've got the six millimeter screws, you probably won't have to do this. So while I'm screwing these in, keep in mind there are actually more than one version of TL smoothers. There's the four and the eight diode versions. I find that the eight diode version these days are not really that much more expensive than the four. So you might as well get the eight. They should work better. Crap. All right, back to it. There are different mounting options for these TL smoothers. This is the one I thought would work best for this printer. So this is the one I downloaded. Feel free to use whichever version you think will work best for your setup. There we go, TL smoothers mounted to the mounting bracket. So before I actually get this mounted into the chassis, I'm actually gonna use this opportunity to get the wiring done while everything's loose and easy to get to. So these are labeled uh, both on the board and on the wire. And, but these are glued on and so we're gonna to have to break the glue in order to get these off. And be careful not to break your connectors. And we will see the easiest way to get these off. Well, on that one, it actually pulled the whole connector off before it actually did get the glue off of here. So their gluing works really well. Mm, let's see what the other one does if I do the same thing. Oh, there, see there, that one actually came off correctly. But I'm not really concerned. Again, if you're doing this, be very careful. You can break these connectors. Given that, I now have to get this glue off. Unrehearsed, unscripted live. Oh, ow. There we go. That's what I wanted. Now this connector will come off and I can pop that back on the board in the same orientation it was in there before. There we go. Notice same orientation as before. Now, in order to get these wires where they need to go, I'm gonna actually have to cut this first cable tie. So grab the snips. Be careful when cutting this cable tie. Do not nip your wires. That'll ruin your day. There we go. Okay, so now the X and the Y wires should be free. Let's kind of untangle them here. There we go. So I'm gonna plug in one of them to here. Let's see, it's gonna orient this way in the case. So I'm gonna put the X up top. Mm -hmm. Go around the back, make sure I do this or it's going to hook up correctly. The X up top. And then, like I said, this one's already labeled Y, so Y on the bottom. And then we're going to take these that it came with. I'm going to put one here. And we're going to put one here. 
There we go. Everything looks good. And we're going to take this one again, check your labeling. Don't get these backwards, or you'll find out quick when you try to print. And we're going to put X into, uh, let's take it behind again. I'm trying to make sure my wiring looks good when I'm done. I'm going to put X here. And I'm going to take Y, run it behind again, put Y here. And that is it for wiring. Now we just need to get this mounted in the chassis. So sorry if you get the back of my head here. But I'm trying to put this in here. They go right over these two bolts, which are M5 screws. And then we just have to figure out how to get your fingers in here with these M5 nuts and actually secure these in place. double check our wiring everything is in place you don't really need to glue these back down because we're not transporting this printer and then you're gonna make sure again that these are all the way seated that should be it now bend this back since I moved it there we go now we can reattach our cover when we're attaching our cover make sure we first reattach the fan which goes into this connector down here. It only goes in one way, it has a key on the side. And then... All right, let's get the printer upright. So we're gonna attach the power cable. And first things first, let's make sure it powers back up. No sparks, it's a good sign. So now that we've got it all put back together, power's back up, let's do a test print, make sure everything's oriented correctly, and we'll see if that salmon skin is gone on our Benchy. So the Benchy's off the printer and we can do a direct comparison to the exact same G code that printed our original one. So if you look at these two prints, uh, you'll notice the one on the left is definitely exhibiting the salmon skinning effect, uh, particularly on the cabin. Uh, if you look particularly close, I don't know if you'll see it in the video, but you can also see it a bit uh, on the curves of the bow of the ship. Um, but if you look at our new one, again, produced using the exact same G-code, the salmon skin effect is completely gone. Uh, all of the surfaces are smoother, and in fact, and I can't account for this other than just that the steppers are working better using the smoothers, but the entire print is better. Uh, the overall quality has gone up dramatically. Um, and all these little dots and, and bumps that you would have thought were just retraction settings or wipe settings or something like that are completely gone using the TL smoothers. So uh, the only thing I can say, now I notice a little bit more of the ringing, but uh, before I don't think you could have told if it was there due to the fact that there were so many um, extrusion errors or, or movement errors. In the original. So when it comes to results like I saw on the Benchy, I was skeptical. I couldn't just let it go with just one print. So I went back, I reprinted another one of my test pieces uh, with the original G-code, and I found the exact same results that I saw on the Benchy. The print on the left is the new print with the TL smoothers installed, and it clearly shows that they're doing the job and that it really does clean up the print overall. So I just wanted to add that here. Uh, again, I, you know, this is a cut and dry one. If you have an Ender 5, you should buy some TL smoothers. You should put it on this printer. You will be a lot happier with your results. So uh, I will leave a link in the description to where I bought mine on Amazon. 
I think that the adapter that I use to put it into the electronics uh, enclosure is the best and easiest to use, and I will include a link to that as well. That can be found on Thingiverse. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be producing more content like this, talking about the Ender 5, talking about my Cosplay 600 printer, as well as doing projects where I get to use these printers to build props and costumes, other things like that. Uh, if you have any questions for me, if you want to comment on what my next upgrade should be, please leave that below. Please like this video. Please go ahead and subscribe, which I've already said. Anyway, that's it. I'm Chris. This is Curzy Fabrications. Thanks, everybody.